Hello everyone! It is Old Roommates time. This week on the show, we revisit the Mary Tyler Moore Show from 1970. So grab your beanie off your head and throw it straight up into the air. It's time for Old Roommates. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. This is Brian. And this is Christina. And today we are going to revisit the Mary Tyler Moore Show. We have carefully, carefully selected an episode from each of the seven seasons. Yes. We begin as we always do, by talking about then, Christina, back then, what was your relationship with the Mary Tyler Moore Show? Thank you so much for asking. I was three years old, so I watched it regularly. Just kidding. So my relationship with Mary Tyler Moore, it was on in the late afternoon, and I would watch it after school. I would come home and watch it. It was probably... God, I want to say it was like on channel 56 or channel 38 or one of those mm -hmm. channels. And I was young, but I really liked the show. I will tell you, I liked the spinoffs better. I liked Phyllis. I liked Rhoda. I never watched Looper mm -hmm. But I really, really liked Mary Tyler Moore. I don't think I've seen every episode. I think it was, you know, one of those... You come home from school and you watch it, and it wasn't so much religiously. But I just remember loving the idea of this single gal, and she was so likable, and I loved her relationships with everybody. Like, I just liked everybody on the show. Everybody. I thought Lou Grant was super grumpy, but it was because I was little, you know, I was young. I was, mm -hmm. you know, elementary school age, probably. But everybody else I really, really liked. I Actually, I don't know if I liked Phyllis that much as a kid. But everybody else I loved. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brian? What was, your, what was your history? I don't know why, but this show, when I was young, was like the goal for everything. It was like I always <laughs> wanted... I thought it was so cool that her bed was in a sofa. Oh, my gosh. I thought it was gosh. so cool that her living room, we had to walk a couple steps the in. The sunken living room was down. Oh, my God. Walking down to the living room. I love that that window in front of her kitchen. I thought that's that was, like, making it. I thought that was, like, yeah. oh, my God, this is what I want my life to be. You're gonna make, make it after all. all. Um, and I just thought that, like, oh, my God, this is what I want. I want, like to be in TV news, I want mm -hmm. to have an apartment all to myself, I want the bed and the sofa, I want this, I want that, I well, want... Well, that explains why you turned this house into a um, sunken living room and the the bed and the sofa, <laughs> like, that's... I was wondering I was a that. child! <laughs> I didn't realize that she was, like, this struggling career woman trying to make it after all. I thought she had made it. In my mind, she had already made it. She was Mary Teller Moore. I think but I, I loved... So you said something very interesting. Because my big challenge when I was a kid was... Phyllis scared me. Interesting. I thought she was so intense. And being a little kid and like watching someone whose facial expressions was, were so sour and pointed. And like mean to Rhoda. And like how could anyone be mean to Rhoda? She's and like the no fun... No offense to Cloris Leachman at all, but as a child, looking at her, she absolutely has those witch kind of features. One thousand right? percent. Kind of like the Mr. Rogers, almost like a Mr. Rogers, or or like Madam Whelan. Ma yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember oh, Madam? Gosh, she's just like her. Yeah. And, uh, and I love Cloris Leachman, but, uh, you know, as an adult, but <coughs> as a kid, you're right, there's, there's things, and there's even episodes that we watch where she's wearing all black, mm -hmm. or very drapey clothes, yes. and she's so mean to Rhoda, mm -hmm. and dismissive, and talks down to people, that, like, she can, she kind of is witch-like as a kid, but I'll tell you, I loved 
the Mary Tyler Moore show. I was not crazy about the Rhoda spinoff. Oh, and wow. um, I remember Lou Grant. I remember watching it. Maybe my, my grandmother I, did or something. I've not seen one but episode. Lou Grant was a huge, a huge success. It, it won was a Emmys drama. all it was the like time. It was like a one-hour drama. But all that to say, I loved the Mary Tyler Moore show as a kid. How'd you feel about it, though? I hated it. No. <laughs> no, loved it. So now, when did you... So, we need to be really careful when we, we mention the episodes. Um, when did you start this journey into the rewatch? So, I started a few... Well, maybe a couple of weeks ago. I started mm-hmm. watching it. It's on Hulu. It's so... also on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay, interesting. Without commercials. Excuse me, as of this moment. That's it's right. It all can change. Yeah. So don't, you know, don't get upset if you turn it on right now when it's gone. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I watched it a couple weeks ago and I was very much looking forward to revisiting this. And we did. We cultivated this. these. We actually took a, a little bit of time to figure out which episodes we were going to watch because we have done these shows before and we've done like full, like one season or mm-hmm. we've done half you know, one season, like, four episodes, and another season, another four episodes. Because it's it's tough when you're dealing with a TV show that's lasted seven years, because a lot of times it doesn't really hit the ground running. So about season three, right? right. And it, it doesn't start picking up traction until, like, three or four, and those are yeah. the, the episodes that you remember and things like that. So we were looking through it, and what's funny, we both came, across, came up with, like, about 12 suggestions, yeah. I think. And many of them overlapped, so... Yeah. We ended up with eight episodes, um, one from each season, and then there's two from season three. And I actually really, actually, I'm going to tell you, I liked this a lot because it showed, and just as an overview, it showed her growth as a character Mm -hmm. and her growth in the relationships over a period of time, which we don't always get to see. Right. I wish we had done something like this for like one day at a time, for example. I wish True. we had done something like that. But anyway, maybe moving forward we can think more about that. But yeah. in any case, I enjoyed the rewatch a lot. Um, we started with the first episode of yeah. the first season. And um, the first thing I noticed right away is the chemistry is already there. Like the chemistry. These actors, every actor in this show... Ed Asner, um, Cloris Leachman, mm-hmm. obviously Mary Tyler Moore, Ted Knight, Ted Knight, um, Valerie Harper, Valerie Harper, like all of these guys who, uh, Murray, um, Captain Steubing, Gavin McClure. Gavin McClure, yes, they're, they're such great actors and you see it right off the bat in my opinion, especially with um, Ed Asner and Mary Tyler Moore. I was a little bit nervous about season one, episode one, mm-hmm. and I thought it was really, really good. Because you thought it was really a little awkward, a little like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I thought they were Stunted. so good right away. Yeah. What What do you think? Before I get too much written into it, um, well, how was your first episode? Yeah, I think um, I understood why I feared Phyllis. Yes, her t- she comes off strong. <laughs> she calls Rhoda dumb Rhoda like throughout mm-hmm. that episode. Dumb Rhoda, oh oh, dumb Rhoda, dumb Rhoda. She's playing tricks on her. Yep, and she's giving her the wrong keys and yes, things like that. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Like everyone, and I wrote this note, and actually by the end of the episode, I wrote, you know, these people aren't even mean; they're just um, busy. They just seem spent. Like, they seem like... It's like, no, I already found my groove, Mary. You have to find your groove. Yeah. And that's what I kind of gathered from this, was like, this woman, Mary Richards, is in a new city. Her relationship has fallen apart. She has no job. She's a good friend from from school. Phyllis is saying, you know, we have this apartment. I already signed a lease for you. Um, (laughs) And you'll you'll figure it out as you stay here. She also is doing it because she doesn't want Rhoda to move in. Right. And um, uh, so all that to say, I think uh, it's interesting because all these characters, I think the reason why, well, I'm not mansplaining, Christina, as you love to always. Oh, yes. But I have the same feeling as you, where it's like these characters feel the chemistry is already built in. Mm. It's weird. These characters feel real. And I think it's because these characters, whether it's Phyllis, Rhoda, Murray, uh, uh, Ted Baxter or Lou Grant, 
they already know themselves. And Mary Richards doesn't. And I think that's right. why the chemistry works so well. So I love this first episode. Um, with Phyllis is really when it starts. She actually walks in first. Yes. And um, I just love when Mary's saying, like, it's like, why do I have to call her, you know, Beth says, I don't, why do I have to call her Aunt Mary? And it's like, well, you know, we're not, you know, but your mom and I have been such good friends. And Phyllis is like, Mary, we don't, we don't lie about family. And then later on, when oh, Bess God. decided to, where to put the furniture, she was like, Mary's trying to talk about her day and Phyllis is disinterested because Mary hasn't commented on where oh the furniture gosh. is. And she's like, oh, the furniture's here. She's like, you haven't even mentioned how Bess, <laughs> but Bess did the furniture so herself. So damn funny. I wrote that Phyllis is just so funny. Her parenting style is hilarious. It's so contemporary. And it's, it, exactly. It is so true to, to today. Yeah, yes. It yeah. really, really is. The passive aggressiveness mm -hmm. is so funny. She's, she's just, I thought she was great. And I, I totally get what you're saying. Like with the, you can, you can see why a child wouldn't like her. Yeah. 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 For yeah. sure. For sure. But it's so funny because she, that whole thing, it, it feels so very much now of the parent who's like, isn't my child amazing? As like they're nodding their head yes, yes to you. Yeah. And if you don't give that the proper credit, there's, it's going to be a problem. So you really have to lay it on. <laughs> but then the minute they trump the parent, then it's all bets are off. Like when yes. Bess says, so she's like, I have a surprise for you. And then Bess goes, um, your boyfriend's coming. Bess, like, <laughs> that was mother's news. Bess. <laughs> Bess, mother wanted to tell Mary that news. Oh my God, it's so oh damn funny. God. And the, uh, that's a note I have. The audience loves Cloris Lee. Yes. yes. They love Phyllis. They're laughing at everything. And it's a note I have for another episode mm -hmm. where I think it sort of backfires. But the, um, the love of Phyllis is instant and I and I really don't know why because I feel like her character is so out of place and so uh, yeah. not not out of place out of time. Yes, you know yep. it's so bizarre. I know it is. It is a little bit bizarre, but hey, what, that's, yeah. maybe it's just audiences. Uh, the audience is filled with like Cloris Leachman fan club or Fans, something. Yeah. You know, um, and then Rhoda comes in and she's harsh but still likable. I loved her accent. I thought her accent was like spot on. Yeah. It seemed right for yeah. her. And I loved that she wants to be mad at Mary and they're so different, but yeah. you can tell they just still like each other somehow. Yeah. Valerie Harper's awesome. I love her. A little trivia here. Um, the audience was not thrilled with Rhoda. Interesting. In the live tapings. In fact, there's a scene, I'm like, they couldn't have filmed that with an audience because there's not a single laugh. When they make the joke about Mary's nightgown mm -hmm. and she's like... Um, what did you what did you do take take this in the Trisha Patricia Nixon or Pat Nixon collection? Pat, yeah, yeah. And it's like you hear a pin drop, and I'm like, did they just shoot this scene without an audience, or did the audience just really not like Rhoda? And I looked it up, and the audience, the first, I guess, couple episodes weren't really thrilled with Rhoda. That she was just cranky, negative, miserable, whatever. So they had to warm her up. So and so, do you have any other notes for season one? Because this I is do. a great segue for season two. I do have I do have notes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, so the whole interplay with Mary and Lou in the job interview, <laughs> when he's like, "You want a drink?" and she's like, "Oh, Mr. Grant, I don't know." And he's like, "He's like, do you want a drink?" And she's like, "Fine, I'll have a Brandy Alexander." <laughs> <laughs> And then they're going back and forth. He's asking her how much, how fast she types. And then, do you know how many men, you know, how many, you know, the yep. whole thing. And it's just, just that, like, who's on first kind of play is really, really funny and cute. It's they so have amazing cute. chemistry that will sustain them the entire series. The entire, and it gets stronger. It, and, and stronger. And she still calls him Mr. Grant. And she still calls him Mr. Grant. Love it. And then um, I love when she answers the phone. The very first phone call is Mr. Grant's wife. Mm -hmm. um, I believe her. Edie, I think. Edie, exactly. Yep. And she says, um, um, oh, Mr. Grant, um, your, your wife is calling. And he's like, oh, yeah. She's going to visit her sister for a month. Tell her I'll talk to her when she gets back. 
<laughs> and that's my last note for that. Yeah. But a great first episode. It was a great first yeah. episode. It really just established everybody. You know, and you do get that feeling that all of the actors were, you know, received a a bio of their character. Yeah. And they yeah. studied like their background and they who they are and what they're supposed to be doing. Even like the there's voices. so much everyone's voice is so, so much character distinct. Mm-hmm. Everyone's accent, their yeah, everything is so distinct. Their their d- style of dress. I mean, it's just so well thought out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really well thought out. Yeah, yeah. It just even just the dialogue is so natural. It just seems like real dialogue. Everything great, great mm-hmm. first episode. So, but you had mentioned that people did not like Rhoda, mm-hmm. and now I think you told me this. The next episode we revisited was uh, season two, episode twenty three. Mm-hmm. That said, uh, it's called "Some of My Best Friends Are Rhoda." Mm-hmm. Wasn't this in response to the negative? I think reception? so. Yeah, I was trying to do a little digging, and I know that the first season, um, I mean, Rhoda was eventually obviously beloved. She had her own spinoff and all that. Yes. But I think they were trying to respond to people, kind of holding up to them because when it's unsubstantiated, why you don't like a character? Is it because Rhoda is? like, openly, like, Jewish. Mm -hmm. She, you know, you've met her mother at this point, and I think that was done, that's episode six of season one, and I think that was done to sort of warm up Rhoda, but she even looks bad in that episode. Oh, spoiler, I watched more episodes. Ah. But they even (laughs) kind of did that because she didn't even want to see her mother. So I kind of put her in a negative light as well, and, you know, but I... She's she's a pretty brass person. Yeah, and for 1970. Yeah, so I think that yeah. might have turned people off. An outspoken woman. Yep. Yeah. Um, but go ahead, so did you have a, um, one thing I noticed right off the bat is the song, the lyrics have changed a little bit, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like, how will you make it on your own? And now it's, who can turn the world on? With yep. her. Yeah, so now it's more about Mary, and it's, I think the ending, the, the it begins... Season one, I think the song ends with, you might just make it after all. Yes. Right? Yeah. You might just make it after all. Now it's, you're gonna, and then later, and I think in a later season, it's, you're, you're gonna make it after all. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny. It's so these little, little, little tiny, tiny things. And things. I forget what season, where Rhoda's walking around with Mary in the city. Yes. So yes. that's different too. I think that was season three yeah. openers. And I will tell you, I watched every single opener. From beginning to end, oh, I was fascinated I love by that. it. Loved love the song, the opener. Loved the song. It loved all me the back. scenes. Yeah. Um, I think it was season four is the one that I remember the most with all of the different scenes with her walking and the guys oh, yeah. struggling past her and then bowing at the yes. the reporter. Like, yeah. well, that. she's bowing because she doesn't want to be in the shot. The camera turns and she ducks. Um, no, she's curtsying. She's she's bowing, congratulating when she does that. I believe they. She is holding the mic. Well, Are you talking about she's holding the microphone in the opening credits? She's holding the microphone up, and then she ducks down. She's not curtsying. It looked like she was curtsying to me. There's a man holding a camera. She doesn't want to be on camera, so she ducks. Okay. All right. I, you know I, what? Oh my god! Do not do this because no, you're I'm trying to spin it. I'm agreeing with you. Sure. It sounds like it. It really sounds like it. Audience, I'm agreeing. With ah. You. Just, just, ah. Let the record show I'm agreeing with Brian. Okay. That's it, I guess. No. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, anyway, I love the opening. All of these, all of these things made me I love when she smile. throws the meat in the, the shopping carriage. Oh, that's the like, best. She's so annoyed. I, I chuckled at that every she, single like, time. She looks at the price and she's like, no, oh, whatever. Like, oh. yeah. like, just rolling her eyes. I chuckled at that almost every single time I saw that. Yeah, very funny. Made me laugh. So, I gotta be honest with you. Like, I don't have a lot of notes because I was enjoying the episode so much. That's fine. And so, I may come across as not knowing what I'm talking about. So, this is about her new friend who actually she got in an accident with. Right. And she becomes friends with her, Mary Fran. From? From New Heart. That's right. And she is a bit anti Semitic. <laughs> But you don't know thing. it. You don't know it. You don't really know it. And let me tell you, it's yeah. really interesting because they don't shove it down your throat. It is super, super subtle. It feels quite real. Yes, it's, it feels very real. I feel like they shove it down your throat these days in, in a, with a, 
a topic like this. Well, it wouldn't even just her being not wanting to, uh, say, not bring Rhoda to a place that doesn't like Jewish people. It would be, you know, it would be like they would find some sort of book in the in the character's house and be like, of why course, do you have yes. this book? Like, it, they'd lay it on real thick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or she, you would say, oh, she would look up Rhoda and go, oh, that's an interesting necklace, and have it be like the Star of David or something. Yeah. Do you know oh, what I mean? like yes, make yes, it a yes. little bit more, yeah. more obvious yeah. that she notices that she's Jewish because she they don't make it obvious. She's always very pleasant to her. That's right. She's not mean or rude. Yeah. And I I liked it. I think yeah. that that's how real people act. Yeah. And when it's but you know if they don't like it, then they just start inviting their friend and not her and mm-hmm. make excuses and things like that. Um, I loved so much about this episode because one thing that I think it does really well is Mary's kind of again this Mary Richards character. She it's a lot of these things you get the feeling are firsts for her. That's yes. why she's so uncomfortable and so mm-hmm. awkward and gawky and her voice cracks and all this. And when you know remember she has loaned this woman money, right? Yes. And she's like, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. Remind me, remind me, remind me. And I think right. we've all been in that situation mm-hmm. where it's like, oh my God, are you really not going to pay me back? <laughs> like, Which brings me to Brian. Uh-oh. Do you remember that money you borrowed from me? I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, I'll totally pay you back. No, I know. I have it. I have it in my pocket. It's it's uh, my other my other pocket. <laughs> You're supposed to say, remind me. Remind me. Um... So I have this note, Mr. Grant, I haven't, I haven't taken my coffee break yet. And he's like, yeah. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it's a little things like, like she, she just wants to be like, like, she's just so like, why? She's trying to stand up for herself. That's right. It took her a lot to even say that. She's like, well, well, Mr. Grant, you know, and just those little moments that, that, Really evolve the character. Yes. It pushes the character along. So um, then I just I found this quote, this line about pretty funny. She's like, "Well, it was thirty, so I offered twenty five, so I saved five dollars." And I was like, "Thanks for the math lesson, Toots." <laughs> like, was that weird to you? It was very weird, but I loved what she said after that. What Mary said, she said, or I can just save $25 by keeping my old wooden racket. <laughs> and that's what I would have said. I would have been like, yeah. well, or I can just like keep my racket. That's right. But she wanted all the new stuff. Phyllis says, I think about Rhoda or Mary. She's a wonderful loser. I think Rhoda. Probably Rhoda. Um, I think Rhoda was a topic of conversation a lot. That's why I'm saying that. Because it, I have my next note. I think it was maybe, was it about... The, the symp- symphony tickets. Was that the right. loser comment? No, it was about tennis, playing tennis. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> was it... Oh, it could have been either one because they were both saying how they don't play well. This... I think the symphony came later. The symphony came later. And I have a note yeah. that says, I felt like Rhoda was being a little unreasonable about the symphony tickets. Yeah. Right? I just, I'm like, why? What's the big deal? Yeah, I think it it sucked at the office, though. When she did have plans, Mary had plans, she really couldn't go to lunch. And they fell through at the exact yeah. moment that, what was her name? Joanna. Joanna or was Joanne? standing right there when they canceled. So, of yeah. course, she was suddenly free. And then Rhoda finds out from Murray that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That sucked. But um, I just wrote, at one point I wrote, there's no doubt in my mind that Phyllis, Rhoda, and Mary all live in this building. Oh, yeah, totally. The way they, they're so comfortable with each other. Yeah. They walk right into, into each other's, you know, into, the, into Mary's apartment. Like, it's very sweet and it yeah. feels very real. And as much as Phyllis and Rhoda aren't crazy about each other, like, it feels authentic. Yeah. It's really I mean, done not, well. You know, when there's three people, sometimes two people don't get along. And that's okay. I love when Phyllis says, there's nothing wrong with dressing correctly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know. She's so, Oh, my gosh. She's so, so funny. Um, I did think it was really interesting that Mary automatically assumed that Joanne didn't like Rhoda because she was Jewish. Again, like, I, I thought everything was so subtle. Mm-hmm. Like, I I was kind of looking at it from Mary's point of view. There's nothing that she said 
about her, about Jewish. Nothing. So for her to assume that it was because she was Jewish, because she was Jewish, was really, really interesting. Well, I think she was, I think, wasn't she trying to, she was trying to play with that to figure it out, because she said, well, that's good, because I'm Jewish. Like, she, she right. sensed it, and then she denied it. Right. And then she said, oh, that's good, because I'm Jewish. But even sensing it was interesting to me. But I loved that she did that. I yeah. thought that was really, really cute. Yeah. I love that she tricked her. And she was well, very believable, and it was very, like, Mary ish for her to do that right she was taking a chance yeah. they, her, her mary tyler moore I'm, oh my god she's so damn good and just yeah. like they're her acting in that scene and you can hear a pin drop i love that when these t old shows have live studio audiences and you feel the audience's awkward yes yes and this they did a similar thing on the golden girls um where um, it's very similar plot line. Dorothy has a new friend who's very literary. She's with author oh, yes, and all yes, this kind yes, of stuff. Yes. And it ends in a very similar way. Sophia's date is Jewish. And they were all supposed to go to the Mortimer Club. And the Mortimer Club, she discovers, is, a, is sort of a, an exclusive club. But she didn't know what it... But exclusive what in exclusive what way. Yeah. Right. And she's like, well, Gutman, Dorothy. His last name's Gutman. And Dorothy's like, what do you mean? She's like, well, he's Jewish, isn't he? And she's like, what does that do with anything? And she's like, well, Gutman, she's like, the, you know, country club is an exclusive club. She's like, well, why would you want to belong to a club like that? And um, Barbara says, the friend says, uh, well, they have, she's like, well, it's their rules, not mine. She's like, besides, they have the best chicken salad in Miami. And she's like, I don't think you're the kind of person I want as a friend. You should go to the Mortimer Club. And Barbara, Barbara Thorndike says, what are you trying to say? Dorothy, <laughs> let me spell it out for you. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And the audience goes crazy, which doesn't happen in that ep this, this in episode. In this Mary Tyler Moore, yeah. yeah. But um, before we get to that, though, I did love that whole thing, which is like, well, because I'm Jewish. Ted... <laughs> Oh, I can take you down to the electrical place and we can watch them do uh, go through the, the things. <laughs> he, was, uh, try, he was trying to show off in front of, uh, maybe it was in front of Joanna, actually. Maybe it must have been, yeah. Um, yeah, but then Joanna does say to Mary, she's like, and when she says, I am, I'm Jewish. She's like, but you don't look, I mean, act. And she's like, what? Um, yeah. And... Oh, but Ted Ted Knight is just... It's just so good. Well, I have a note about him in a later episode. Yeah. Uh, who he was reminding me of. Oh, interesting. Um, um, and then I wrote, does Rhoda have the right clothes? Oh, that was the whole conversation. And then, the and then, tennis stuff, yeah. And then at the very end, she says, oh, yes, remind me to pay you. And she's like, I am. I'm reminding you now. Yeah. And she pays. So and good. And then, so Rhoda's bent out of shape. She gets... She gets Stood up twice. So the second time she's like completely, you know, first time she's very mad, overreacted, I think. They worked it out and she's like, I'm going to have it again. And then it happened again. And what I really, really loved is they don't show another confrontation between the two of them. They just have this like ending scene of the two of them together. And then Mary asks her, aren't you going to say anything about what happened between us? And Rhoda says... Um, I decided it would bug you more if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true, right? For someone yep. like Mary, of course. Yep. You don't say anything about it at all. It's going to bug her forever. <laughs> do you remember we used to do that to each other? We had this this thing where we, every once in a while we would say, I could say something so rude to you right now, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. We were so witty. Let's bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my um, gosh. All right. Our next episode is season three, episode one, mm -hmm. The Good Time News. Now, this this episode was nominated for an Emmy for Best Writing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Shall we begin? Let's Let's begin. The gist is that they are getting feedback that WJM, the news is too sad, depressing, and heavy. And why can't we lighten it up with, like, you know, they have all these ideas of light, lightening it up. Not everyone's on board. Uh, Lou Grant is certainly not. He wants no. to do more hard-hitting news and keep it straight. Um, Mary's a little more open, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I don't know who says this, but my first quote is, when you're hot, you're hot. 
Did you have that note? And then, um, Ted, are you going into the meeting? And, um, and then Murray interrupts and says, is the Pope Catholic? And then Ted goes, Ted says, I'm pretty sure he is. I'm not, he's, I'm not sure about the other, the last one. <laughs> Ted emerges from his news, uh, from his, you know, the productions area, and he checks his watch against the clocks on the wall. And then it's 1,000% ad-libbed, right? Yeah. That is not in the script. I'm, I'm sh sure. betting it's not. And it, Ted is so, so funny. My note uh, through, and this, I read this note a few times. Is he not a bit Donald Trumpian? Oh, the, I could see the that. The voice, the hair, the womanizing, the... Uh, I could see you know, that. Not yeah. getting political, but there are many, many similarities. And uh, with each episode, I was like, oh, God, I wonder if a younger Donald Trump watched the Mary Tyler Moore show and was inspired by Ted's. Maybe. Although Ted Baxter has a little humility and he has that charisma and he has that boyish kind of charm, which I don't think... Trump has. Well, maybe the presentation, like his presentation as a newsman. Yes. Very serious. Yes, because he's yeah. two different people. I That's mean, right. Ted, Ted Baxter, are to yes. totally different. He's the news guy, and then he's the Goofy, Ted Baxter giggling. Guy. Yeah, yeah giggling. chuckling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's so funny. I love when Mary's talking to Rhoda, and um, she's like, so. I have to, you know, I have to go to this meeting because I'm, you know, she's like basically they introduced me as the woman executive, mm -hmm. and Rhoda's like. And what do you say? And Mary goes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, she goes, I'm sorry. Sorry, she goes, hi. <laughs> I love that conversation, too. That's the first conversation, I think. And um, it's, she. what I love that she says is, she says, I feel like I'm rep representing women everywhere. Yeah. And I think that's a nod to the show. Complete thousand percent. Right? I mean, yeah. she was... Such an icon, and she really was one of the first career, single career women on TV that whose main job wasn't trying to find a husband, yeah. in that each story didn't involve her dating somebody. Yeah. And I love that that line was in there. Yeah. The last, jumping up quite a bit, the very last episode, she refers to herself as a career woman. Mm. And I actually was stunned. I'm like, isn't that sad that then they had to actually make a word career woman? Yeah. Like, that it was that, you know, unique of a situation and that women felt like they, you know, and or not women felt like they had to do that, but that they were put in position to clarify mm -hmm. that if you have a career as a woman, you need to add the word woman. Right. It is so insulting, so shocking. Um, but yeah, and, but it is, it's like, and it's, I think it's even more so the fact, like you're saying, that she's single. Yes. Because it's like, you know, we watch, we've seen women with jobs and sitcoms, you know, before that point, but she is a single woman. You're exactly right. It's not, this is not, she, the episodes we watched, I don't think involve a date. No. Yeah. No. So anyway. Um, however, you know, and this, this brings us to another topic that they, they tackle on this particular episode where she realizes, she finds out that the person that was the executive producer was making $50 more a week mm -hmm. than she is. And they're doing the same job. And several times, different people say, no, you're doing a better job. That's right. And so she's pissed. Yeah. And she goes into Mr. Grant's office and she says, what is going on? Like, why yeah. am I? And I love that he's like, well, because he's a man. Like, that was his answer. Um, added, he added that after. He said he had a family to feed. Right. So yeah. the first thing he said was because he's a man. man. And she's like, and she's thrown back because yeah. she's like ready for an argument. She's like, whoa, what, uh, what, what? Yeah. But I'm, you're saying just because he's a man, even though I'm doing the same job. And then even Rude Lou Grant says, a better well, job. A better job. <laughs> she's like, whoa. And then, then he says, <coughs> he has a family to support. So she leaves and comes back. And I love the argument that she has. Do you remember the argument that she has? Remind me. Of course not, because you're a man. <gasps> so she comes back and she's like, no. Because if you're saying that he's getting paid more because he is a man and he has a family to support, then the pay should be different for single men 
here than married men and the the pay is not the same and, mm -hmm. and i love it was like oh my god i love him so much and then and she so he still doesn't bend he's just like well whatever you know yeah you know, when I don't even think he says I like, think about it or anything. The and very, then, oh, Ted Baxter interrupts yeah, him. Right. So they never finish the conversation. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, so then the they add in. So the fifth, the fifty dollars more is brought back at the very end of the episode. Yes. And um, but before that, so then they do try. They try and liven it up with some a funny story or some banter here and there. With John Amos. Yes, that's from right. Good times. From good times. Yep. And I thought even that was a bit groundbreaking to be like without yes. there was no there was no discussion like well he is a black man no it was like let's have Gordy Gordy be the co-host the co-anchor yeah. no there was there's no, no hesitation no hesitation no at concern all. from the studio nope not at all so um and I was yeah I that was nice to see a person of color yeah in that time and that happened several times throughout the episodes that we watched yeah there were several people of color and i thought that was even great. at even at chuckles uh, funeral which we'll get to yes um so uh the, so as an example of what they're trying to emulate they put on channel six news and it cuts to just the audio cuts to <laughs> you hear the anchor laughing yes, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now more in that killer typhoon <laughs> that felt very uh, 30 Rock slash The Simpsons to me. It was very funny on <laughs> the timing. Um, I love when, oh my God, and there's a couple moments that of the episodes we watched where Mary has to go into the news, the production studio, oh God, and I talk to Ted on the air. Yeah. It is so damn funny. So Gordy gets a compliment on how funny he is. And Ted gets upset and says, huh, he's the funny one, huh? Because Ted was told, no, you're the straight one. Yeah. And Gordy's the funny guy. It's like, <laughs> Ted goes, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> and Mary goes, Ted, please, no. <laughs> right? And Ted goes, hey, Mary, I have a personality too. And she goes, Ted, you don't. <laughs> 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 like right before they start filming and she screams oh. it across the studio to him. I rewound it. I laughed so hard. Oh my gosh. I thought that was so She's damn, so damn good. She's so exasperated. She's so funny when she's exasperated. I love that's what I said too. I'm like, I love, love, love when she has that nervous, that nervous and nervous anger. Yeah. At one point she's yelling at um at Lou during this. Uh -huh. I think it's probably during that same conversation about the fifty bucks. And she's like nervous and she's angry. And she's like, oh, I, I think we still have something to talk about. Like she's just so like upset. Like she's just trying so hard to assert herself. Um, really, really. Yeah, I have, a, I have a note in a different episode about that same kind of thing when she's talking about going to jail. It's She's so funny. Oh. Um, so I, I was inspired so at one point there's a report about um global not, it's not global warming but it's about um well it kind of is about global warming yeah. they have a thing a thing saying population population growth was the issue okay oh, using right, resources, right, right. right so it's like by the year 2000 the population will be seven billion people and so i looked it up the population in, in the year 2000 it was um just it was six point one four billion. Oh, they not too overshot far off. it a little bit. Not too far off though. Uh, at one point, Mary yells, "Will you shut up, Ted?" <laughs> uh, but I loved. I just wrote that I loved the Ted Gordy Mary scene. It was just it was so great. funny. It was how so funny. threatened Ted feels and the way he all behaves. the gestures. Yep. Um, yeah, she's just great. And it ends and Ted, though. That's oh, Ted at his best too, when he's like. Insecure. Totally insecure. Like, yeah. uh, I love when Ted Baxter is insecure. It's just hilarious. Um, how about, so the, the, it comes back to the $50 a week, and, and he says, um, I'm going to do $25 a week. Yeah. And she says something, and I forgot, but then he says, so we'll talk about it. Like that. It was about Ted, though. I think, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and she, he's like, all right, so we'll talk about it. And then it just sort of ends. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I was glad that they circled back to the 50. Mm -hmm. Right? That was good. And I did like that about this episode. Like, all of the episodes, I feel like the show in general, they 
they mention things, but they don't shove it down your throat. Yeah. It's it's enough. Like the conversations are enough. Like they, they you know what it is? They treat their audience like they have a brain. Mm -hmm. They don't force feed you, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. And that's probably why it was so well received. Yeah. So moving on. The next episode, also season three. Um, and this is, and yes, season three, episode 17, 18. My Brother's Keeper. Another great example about how they don't shove it down your throat. Mm. Go on, Brian. Uh, I wrote this line, and it is so effing funny. Phyllis. Oh, Mary, you'll adore him. He's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Cloris Leachman enters the scene in all black, the drama. Uh, Rhoda... Um, Rhoda says that she was snapping her fingers along to Mozart at the symphony. I don't, I don't have many notes on this one. I don't have any notes either. I, and some of them I don't even understand. Ro uh, I'm, I'm not all that saved. Oh, yeah. Mary basically says she's not a virgin. Oh, that's it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not all that saved. That's what that's yeah. from. Okay, yeah. Rhoda says to Phyllis, hi, sis. <laughs> that was great. Um, that was great. Okay, I so, love the Phyllis and Rhoda interactions. Oh, I love yeah. that Rhoda's just like, she's all in. So basically, for anybody who's not understanding our cryptic <gasps> oh, yeah. words, Sorry. this episode, um, Phyllis's brother comes to town. She wants to fix him up with, Ro with Mary. Mary, but he hits it off with Rhoda. Rhoda. And they spend a lot of time together. So, yeah, Phyllis being completely dramatic, dressed all in black. Because she hates she's, Rhoda. She can't stand Rhoda. And she's very upset that they are spending so much time together. And Rhoda just feeds right into it. And yeah. it's just, it's a really great episode as far as that little interactions. Um, I just wrote that, like, Phyllis is so great at being passive-aggressive. Like, that is her, like, best quality. <laughs> she's, it's really, she's so, she's so funny. And the character, I completely agree. And there's that great moment where, in this episode where she's like, um, Rhoda, I must speak to you at once. It's vital. The rest of you carry on and enjoy the party. It's important to Mary. Because <laughs> Mary had gone up to Phyllis saying, like, because I didn't, someone did, was that the episode where everyone's like, Mary, your parties are awful. You have awful yes, parties. Yes, well, Mary. that was a running gag. That running gag. All her parties the are terrible. Series. But um, she basically says, like, you know, she's like, oh, Phyllis, please don't do this. And like, it's my party. I'm just so afraid. And she's like, Mary, it'll be fine, but I must speak to Rhoda. So then the whole thing, and so she's like, Phyllis is talking to Rhoda. She's like, he's this, he's that. He's this, he's that. And Rhoda says, he's gay. <laughs> so get this. The network had to edit out a lot of the laughing and clapping from the studio audience. Wow. Yeah. And there was no, like, they weren't sure of the reaction because it's like, you know, 1973 or 72, like yep. a gay character. And, but there was so much cheering, laughing, clapping, and they had to cut, like, I guess, I don't know, I'll say a couple minutes out. Interesting. Yeah, they couldn't control the audience. They were, well, they loved it. And the best part about that, Phyllis's reaction. Gay? I'm so relieved! <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, also, and I think that's the one with the piano, right? When she's yes. like, Lars keeps bumping into the... <laughs> yes. And then, oh my God! And then is this when we meet Georgette, or no? No, oh no, because I watched more episodes, so we meet Georgette at a different time. Georgette worked with Rhoda at the store. She right, was another right, dresser, right. yeah. So Georgette having a conversation with Phyllis about the popcorn. Oh I'm my gosh. so glad Mary doesn't have popcorn at the party. I hate popcorn; <laughs> it gets stuck in my teeth, Phyllis. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with oh Ted. Oh my God, Georgette. Yeah, I liked her better now. I never liked her. Oh really? I loved she was her like, when, when I was, I was a younger. Kid. I just, I she bothered me somehow. Her voice. I Bleeding. loved her when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh my God. She was uh, perfect for Ted. Yeah. 
Um, I probably missed a lot of the subtleties. You know what I mean? Some yeah. of like the sarcasms and stuff. I think I missed a lot of that when I was a kid. I don't have any more notes on that one. Me either. Next episode, season four, episode one. This is one of the big ones. So now, Entertainment yeah. Weekly, Rolling Stone, a, I think Bravo, a bunch of different pop culture, very well-known pop culture experts have put this episode, The Lars Affair, um, from 1973, um, up there with Chuckles the Clown. Wow. As like the best episodes of Mary Tyler Moore. Interesting. Um, the... The gist is this. We well, be, and it's the introduction of, of Betty, Betty White, White as Sue Ann Nivens. America's treasure. Yeah. The happy as homemaker. Sue, yeah, Sue Ann Nivens. This episode blew my mind. And Carl watched it with me, and it blew his mind as well. Yeah. It was such a good episode. But weird, Christina. It's weird. Through my middle age lens, mm -hmm. in this day and age, the... Uh, behaviors, mm -hmm. the things people find funny, the um, points of view, and even the maybe the fact that Lars was not even talked about as as the blame. Yeah, right. He was never. She he does say like a, he was like a non-issue. She does say, and I'll punish him for this. But yeah, yeah, it's one line, and um, but it is. Blows my mind how funny the audience found all of this stuff. It is known. This is not like Phyllis is tricking herself. She's pretending to be yes. naive to this whole thing. Yeah. But it is known they are truly having an affair. That Lars and Sue Ann Nivens are having an affair. Yep. Several the, the witnesses. Lies, it's been going on for so long that Lars has gained nine pounds because her cooking is so good. Right. Um, and yeah, she's, even, yeah, it's not like a one pair. His day. shirts are coming home cleaner than when he's left for the day. Oh, which um, funny. there are some funny lines, but I, the audience was really laughing at, um, at the situation yeah. when it, this is not speculation. This is a known adulterous affair and the audience is having a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, it so blew my mind because they really love this character of Phyllis they don't even know Sue Ann Nivens. Right. And yet, they're having a great time in the studio audience. I know. Did that surprise you? A little bit, but I mean, Betty White is such a force. Mm -hmm. in, in this character, Sue Ann Nivens is so hilarious. You just, I don't know, it's, it's hard to hate her. She's not likable, but you love her. It's the weirdest kind of combination. And I think one of the reasons that... It didn't bother people as much, or maybe me, is she's so unapologetic about it. Sue Ann Nivens is not denying it. But that happens it at is the end. what it is. It happens at the end, though. But even at the end of the episode. I don't know. Like, I mean, she's not in it very much, I yeah. guess. But yeah, it's sad. Phyllis's whole reaction is sad. I think the laughing is more about. Rhoda and Mary knowing what's going on mm -hmm. and their reactions to Phyllis not thinking in reality. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think there was a laugh a minute in this thing. Yeah. And I just couldn't get over it. And um, I I was thinking, like, two things. One, this is 1973. The sexual revolution is quieted down. So maybe it's like, oh, my husband's having an affair. Well, he'll he'll get... I th There's even a line, like, well, he'll... Burn out on her. Yeah, he'll come back to me. Yeah, we'll just we'll just let him have the affair. Yeah, uh, that's really what the course of action was here. And even I think Mary and Rhoda, I think there was some some conversation like, well, you know, it'll he'll get over it. He'll he'll burn out. It's like, wow, but really? it's an affair, guys. It's an yeah. Affair. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, a couple of interesting notes I have here. Um, I said why one of the things is Phyllis is waiting for Lars in the first scene in Mary's apartment. Like, why is she waiting for Lars? She lives downstairs. She's, I know. She lives in the building. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of interesting that Lars would call her in Mary's building. Like, well, he probably called, my thought was strange. he called downstairs first yeah, and then, yeah. I love the decor of Mary's apartment. She has this pumpkin cookie jar that stays with her throughout the whole series. Like, it's in, like, the last episode, I think, or the second to last episode that I watched. 
but it's like such randomness, just like a pumpkin cookie jar. Like that yeah. must have a story behind it. Yeah, it has to have be a Mary Tyler Moore thing from home or something. And I love the that sh she fixes the lampshade. Like all these like little to things. do her nails. Yeah, she fixes the lampshade, and then it doesn't actually fix. Did you notice that? No. She at one point she leans over to fix the lampshade, yeah. and she, and it. It stays crooked. <laughs> well, she turned it crooked so she could look at her nails better to, to paint them. This was, I think, a different part. Oh, okay. Yeah. it was. She, like, kind of leaned over. Uh, like she was, like, on the couch, and she leaned over yeah. to fix it. She, okay. And then she oh, looked minute. again, and it was still crooked. I saw I, a couple I, times where they, someone, a character would close her door, and the door would pop back open. Yeah. Like, that? I just, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I thought it was really fun. So the other part of the story that we're not talking about is that the second the second storyline is that they hired a crew to film actual arrests. Oh yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking, oh my god, that's so funny. It's like cops. Right. And I love that they're going back and forth. Like, is it a good, good idea, idea or is it a bad <laughs> idea? And I love that like they, they just aren't even having any arrest and that, that Maria ahead of her time, she thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Wonderful. Was oh, the wonderful. Word. wonderful. Yes, that's right. She said. And if you had times. said rotten <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be in this mess. <laughs> right. And then he tried it again. How about when how about when Mary said, Sue Ann doesn't seem like the type um that you would leave your wife for. She seems more like the kind of woman you leave some you leave wait, did I say that, that right? You leave. Sue yeah. yeah. Sue Ann doesn't seem like the type of woman you leave someone for. She seems like the woman that you leave someone else. No, leave fuck, for I'm someone saying else. it wrong. You know what I mean? I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. That she seems like the woman you would leave. I not thought the, that was not the funny. mistress. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was funny. Um, and I did love how uh, Rhoda's friend, she talks about her friend Cynthia Zimmer, her other roommate uh, in New York. Uh, 14 married guys in one year. Christmas was amazing. So, uh, so many presents, no people. <laughs> I loved Phyllis talking about Lars. And she's like, I'll never forget when he turned to me one night and said, Phyllis. Yakuznada. Like, like, <laughs> like some sort of thing. I'm like, it sounds like St. Olaf. Like, That's what Carl like, said. Oh my God. That's what Carl said. He's like, well, I guess we know where Rosen Island got it from. Right, right. Um, I wrote the apple pie stuff is so damn funny. Phyllis makes an apple pie to be more woman. <laughs> to be more woman. Oh, and that apron. Did you see that? Like, I bed loved it. Comforter? Oh my God, I loved it. Oh, I thought it was terrible. I loved it. It like, went all the way down, up and down. It looked like a comforter. I loved it. I kind of want one. Oh my god! All right. Okay. Oh my god! It's like it was went up and back. I loved it. The um, apple pie stuff is so funny though. So she's trying to be more woman like, more domestic. Right. Right. So she made an apple pie. She's never made one before. And Mary and Rhoda tell me what you think. And Mary's just like, "Mo oh, Phyllis," you know. And she like obviously can't stomach it. And then Rhoda tastes. She's like. Mm. I love this pie. <laughs> I love this pie, Phyllis. I love it. What does Phyllis say? Something like, um, oh, Rhoda. <laughs> she, she said, I didn't write it down. I'm so I pissed. I can't believe you didn't write it down. I didn't write it down. I didn't write it down, but it was just like she knew. She knew that yes. it was not true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, For sure. Yeah. Then she, oh, this is this is one of the parts where the audience was having way too much fun. So they said, Phyllis, does Lars know that you know that they're having, that he's having an affair? She's like, oh, no, 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 I have been hiding it. It's getting more difficult, though, Mary and Rhoda. Um, last night during Hawaii Five-0, I began to weep uncontrollably. The audience laughed oh my God. like crazy. Later on, she does say, you see Mary and Rhoda. And like every time Rhoda's face is like, <laughs> like I can't, like, I just can't win with her. Um, but when she talks about, recently I read a book called um, The Life of the Bee. And the audience started laughing. It was like, that's all she said was The Life of the Bee. She's like, they love her. Did you know that the male bee, um, services the queen and once he has serviced the queen he dies all in all not a bad system and the yeah. crowd goes wow they just love her but it's well, so funny weird i know yeah. but it is weird they love this character so much but she's being too. blatantly cheated on 
I know it's weird to me. But I think it's because she doesn't seem that bothered. Well, it's funny in the one hand because so first of all, I was like, is it less of an issue because it's after the sixties, whatever. But the other thing I was thinking is like she has such a grip on Lars that is the comedy because the tighter right. the grip she has, she really can't control the situation. Well, and the other thing too is like we never see Lars; he's never yeah. shown. He's not like a real. So character. you don't see them together. You don't yeah. know what their relationship is like. Right. I mean, you know that she's pretty controlling and all that, yeah. but. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's a whole lot invested in the Lars Phyllis relationship. Yeah. So maybe. I do I did love the fact that Sue Ann was just not apologetic. She's so funny in these scenes. Mm -hmm. Kicking the door shut. Crowd goes wild. Like, yeah. I went wild. Yeah. I busted out yeah. laughing. I love the fact that, you know, she treats her her chocolate fondue, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. As like a child. Because he's all excited because they finally were on that cop car was in the right place at the right time. Yes. And he slams his hand on the counter. He's all excited. Yes. And so, yeah, she... And what's funny, I was waiting for her to, like, hit on him because that was a big running gag, too, is mm -hmm. her constantly hitting on him. Mm -hmm. But I think I just didn't see any of those episodes. You probably saw them all since you apparently watched all of the episodes. But then, yeah, so she's she's not threatened by Phyllis at she all. She flat out says, I'm not giving up, Lars. Yeah, she's yeah. just like, it's fine. And, and then, she seems totally fine. Yes. With being the other woman. Like she, it's not even that she's not saying, Again, like, I hope he leaves Lars just, for me. Yeah, it, but she's like, no, I'm, I'm good with the situation. It's, it's yeah, good. She's Works always been like that. Yeah. And then Phyllis turns, turns for her, she's like, you're bananas, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I love that the audience was so invested in like, so first Phyllis slams the oven door oh, shut it was so and then good. Betty White kicks the oven door shut and both of those get huge laughs. Yes. yes. Um, I did write, it ends a bit sad, um, that Phyllis, that this is Phyllis's life that of just checking in on Lars at the office and hanging up to make sure yeah, he's there. Yeah, but it's, I, I think that for her, it's a win though. Like, I feel like she feels like it's a win. Yeah, she got she, him back. She yeah. got him back and she can Thanks to Mary. Thanks to Mary. That was a great little that speech. Was really I loved great. that. Yeah. I, I forgot how that ended and I loved it. Yeah. Loved, loved, loved every second of that. But yeah, I, I didn't, but you don't feel bad for, for Phyllis. Like I didn't leave that show feeling bad. I felt okay for her. I felt bad. Yeah. I did. I like imagine that being like your, your life. I don't know. But it wasn't my life. It's her life. So no, I that's understand. different. Yeah. Um, all right. Next one. Um, yes, so the next one was season five, episode one. Will Mary Richards go to jail? I remember this episode. It's so funny. This is like one of those things I really remembered. Now, this episode won the Emmy for best writing for a comedy series. All right. So the first thing I noticed, I love, and this is one of the, this is when I realized, I'm like, I really loved how we chose one from every episode, like season. every season, yeah. because you absolutely see the growth and you see the growth and the relationship between her and Mr. Grant. And it's so clear in this. They definitely feel more like equals, mm -hmm. even though she's still calling him Mr. Grant and yeah. all that. I love that they're, you know, kind of relying on each other. You see that, like, real friendship that's there now. Yeah. She's checking him for swollen glands. For mumps, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. So funny. Uh, I love this little dialogue that Mr. Grant has, this little, yeah, speech or whatever, monologue. He says, I love my doctor. He's a good doctor. <laughs> Took me 20 years to break him in. He doesn't tell me to lose weight. He doesn't tell me to exercise. He doesn't tell me to cut down on my drinking. He's a good doctor. I love it. I love it. Don't we all want that doctor? Don't oh we all God. want that doctor to have someone just say, hey, you look, you're, you're doing great. Don't change a thing. Um, is there any security at WJM? Oh, God. Everyone walks, just walks right through the doors. Mary, there's no security. At all. Ted Baxter is a yes. local celebrity. He has no security. People, any person can walk in off the street into yeah, this newsroom. That's right. Anybody, and they do. And, and they really do. So this this is definitely a middle-aged lens for me. <laughs> I felt a little uneasy with Mary and this strange person in Mr. Grant's office alone. Yep. I felt uneasy about that. I'm like, wait. he's odd. Can we, can we crack the door? He's can odd. Can Mary go in with them? I, it was definitely a, a middle-aged All place. he said was, I have something really private to tell someone. Yeah. Come right into this closed like, room. Oh, here. This little tiny office. Yeah. I didn't like that You could have a gun. 
It could There's no security. Could have, I, know. No I know. I know. And that's us jaded middle-aged uh, That's workers, the middle-aged right? ones, yeah. Um, what I thought was funny was, you know, they he tells her this top secret information and has all the documents to prove it, yeah. which was key. Yeah. He leaves. She's like, Mari, I have this thing. da 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 Oh, my God. Here are the documents to prove it. And she opens up her draw, throws her documents in, shuts the draw, no lock, no key, just haphazardly just throws these supporting true. documents into her desk draw that is anybody could just walk over. Literally and anyone walks into anyone. that newsroom. It's right in open public. It's not even in loose <laughs> desk draw. Like, would right. you put it in, like, the office draw yeah. or something? Yeah. I thought that was really, really it's funny. It's basically these, yeah, because what it is, it's like this big, um, it's calling it a graft. And it's um, these businesses that are doing, you know, yes. these shady deals. Um, right. Um, so I thought that was really, really funny. Um, but don't let that influence you. Oh, Lou oh, Grant. Oh, that was Lou, Lou Grant. Oh, talks God. to Mary. Yes. And I says, didn't write down about, the whole speech, but it was It's excellent. so good. Excellent speech. Excellent this speech. It's all about... Heartfelt. All about democracy. It's like, because mm-hmm. the second you reveal your source... We will not get any other big breaks mm-hmm. because no one will trust the press. That's we have right. that's why we have freedom of the press. This is about the freedom of the press. This is about a citizen's right to to expose some something bad, and it's about our democracy. Mm-hmm. But don't let that influence you. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. But she, before that, I have yes. to say this: Mary hands Ted. <laughs> The breaking news. Okay, I love those scenes too. You said it earlier. Oh my god! I love those so, scenes just where she's off camera, yeah. trying to get his attention. Yeah. And he's in professional mode, and oh my god! Just Ted, Ted. She's like waving him. He's like totally not paying attention. It's <laughs> like waving him down. She's like, read it. He's like, read it. And he, and he, he says, read it to it himself. To himself. Just out loud. <laughs> blood curdling scream across the studio oh my god and the audience goes crazy oh my god. That, those are some of mary Tomer's finest moments those in the, the series best. she just was so frustrated with ted well it's because she's usually so really put really together. put together you yes, know she she's very thoughtful in what she says <laughs> and how she acts and how she dresses and everything else so when she gets so frustrated to the point where she has to have an outburst yeah. of some sort it's hilarious. It's, she, it's all cylinders when yes. she, whenever she loses her cool. Similarly, so I wrote Ted Knight's Awesome in this episode um, throughout. But so then good. Mary, um, after the speech, right? So Lou gives her this big speech about democracy. Yes. And Mary says, no, it's the, <laughs> it's the right thing, Mr. Grant. It's the honorable thing. It's the only thing. There's just one problem. I don't want to go to jail, Mr. Grant. <laughs> she <laughs> busts out laughing. Starts wailing, oh. and it goes on and on and on. But she does go to jail. But before they have she a does. party, Sue Ann wants to have Sue a party wants for to have her. A party. It is so damn funny. She pulls Mary aside because Mary's mm-hmm. being a little glum because she knows she's going to jail that night. Yes. Mary. Oh, do you have it written down? My only question oh. yes, I, I do, but you can say it. I know you're going to say the timeline. Right? Or no? What do you mean? I thought the timeline was weird. Timeline's weird. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, Because it sounded like they were working, I guess they work, do work every, how does that work in a newsroom? They must work every day, because it was a Sunday night, but then she said Monday. It was a little weird. It was a little yeah, trippy that way. it's a little trippy. Then she says... No, my oh. comment was, she said this party, and my note was, and I looked at, looked back on okay. it, but uh, where are Rhoda and Phyllis? at this party that she's going to jail. So I looked it up. Phyllis was still on the show. She didn't leave until season five, ex- um, episode 18. Okay. But uh, Rhoda left in season three. So that's why she wasn't there. But I was like, why wouldn't Phyllis be there? Like, she's a friend. Right. Like, it seemed weird it was just the newsroom that was there. You wonder, I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but I so you wonder if, like, they were just trying to keep it as top secret as private, but Phyllis is a nosebag. Like, Phyllis, Phyllis is super nosy. She's going to jail. Yeah. And it's also her friend. Someone's going to have to, she's a friend, she's going to have to keep an eye on her apartment. Yeah. Um, let's see. So she goes to jail. She goes to jail. She meets Sherry and Kim. <laughs> what are you in here for? I fell in love with a cop. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's so damn good. By the way, that actress's name is Barbara Colby. She looked familiar. Well, you said you watched Phyllis. I did. She's in Phyllis. So get this. She does this does this one episode in Mary Tyler Moore. They love her. The audience loves her. I guess one of the things the audience is laughing so loud they sort of had to skim some of the oh my yeah. God. That she nailed every line she she had that they were like we have to bring her back. They bring her back, same character. Mary tries to help her get a job in, in uh, fashion design. Uh -huh. um, and audience loves her. They love working with her. The cast and crew love her. So when Phyllis is spun off shortly after this, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, they give her a, a job on Phyllis as Phyllis's boss. Oh, wow. She films three episodes. Now, all the while, she's taking acting classes. She wants to improve her craft. She stays fresh. Like, this is a yeah. well-loved character actress. She is leaving um, the uh, acting class with a friend. This is in real life, Barbara Colby. And they are, she and her friend um, are talking in the parking lot in front of her car. A car pulls up and murders them both in gun. I'm sorry, kills, they, sh they shoot them both. He lives, she dies. Oh my God. And the guy said he has no clue who it was, but it definitely seemed deliberate. And they have no, it's an, un, it's a, uh, cold case. It's an unsolved, oh unsolved, my unsolved God, that's murder. Terrible. Yep, it's a what do they call it? Cold case. Cold, cold case. case. Yeah, it's it's an un, it's an uns, unsolved. Remains, well, an unsolved mystery. Murder. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it it is. It remains unsolved to this day. Oh my gosh! If there are any <laughs> podcasters, I know there's a million podcasts about like these murder mysteries. Murder mysteries. Yeah. Open this True case. Crime. Yeah. The Open murder, this case. The this murder. Is crazy. The murder. Of Barbara Colby. That's horrible. She she had she was gonna be a regular on Phyllis, and I'll tell you this. Did anybody question the one that played Kim? Because I would be a little <laughs> yeah, bit jealous. She, was, she great was great too. She was great. I liked her too. Um, I love the scene with Lou and Mary in jail. It's so good when they hug. When he's like, when he's so he's proud like, I'm not a of hugger. her. Yeah, he's so proud of her. He's like, if you're my daughter, and she's like, what? And so sweet a little i'm not gonna a little emotional i got a little emotional about it as well and you really feel the love he has for her yes and um but he tells her reveal your source yes and she has a great little monologue there where she's like, she's like i did not go into your office that day to find out to ask what i should do right i went into your office to hear you say it yeah and she's like she it was knew such a nice, yeah she the, knew what he was the gonna best say. relationship on the show the two of them how hard did you laugh when Mary and the sex workers are saying goodbye to each other? Oh, and, and they leave. They are the ones that leave. <laughs> oh my God, it got me. Oh it takes God. a lot to shock me. I feel yeah. like I've seen everything twice. That was great. It, that was that great. That was hilarious. That was such a great, oh, it's so it's a great good. little twist. Yep. Loved it. Loved, loved, loved. Um, and then this is where, like, Sue Ann, she must be more of a regular at this point but she and Murray their rivalry oh my god I mean bald people so are so good. jolly they, they the two of them they just need one line and then the one line comes back it's yeah. just perfect they can't help themselves with now, their I, one I remember it wasn't one of these episodes that we watched but one I'll never forget she uh, he says something to her and then she's like standing kind of behind him and she just goes oh She's looking down at his head. Oh, I'm just checking my lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. All right, now oh we're moving on. Are we moving on? Um, I think so. Do we have anything else? Oh, Ted Knight had a good... Uh, Ted Baxter had a good yeah. line. When... Um, when they, so they kept talking about mumps and how it had something to do with like you know the, oh my I never performance say, yeah. Yeah. and that was kind of a running thing going on like nobody's finishing the sentences because it's you know about the penis blah blah yeah. blah and you know so Ed, um so Lou walks out and he's all grumpy or whatever and Ted goes who cares if you run out of gas if you never take it out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's another good one. I forgot about that one. I didn't even write it down, but I remembered it. When um, So they're talking about, she's like, oh, I'm just going to bring my toothbrush. And then, um, and then so Mary goes to get her toothbrush, and Georgette says to Murray, um, how long will Mary be in prison? Um, no, and he's like, until she reveals her source. And Georgette says, 
Well, when will she reveal her source? And Murray goes, she will never reveal her source. And Georgette says, oh, maybe she ought to bring another toothbrush. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my God. By the way, Georgia Engel, two times Emmy nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Mary Tell Moore Show. She never won. But Everybody she... else has won. Do you want to hear Emmy. it? Should we do this now or later? Do it now. Do it now. I'm, it's so, I'm so proud of this show. Get the this. The amount of Emmys that was that 29, won. I didn't write down nominations, but 29, it won 29 Emmy Awards. One. Th 29 three Emmys. Amazing. For Best Comedy Series. Um, for 75 in a row, 75, 76, 77. So really the last three years, mm -hmm. not even the, at all the first uh, four years. Interesting. Mary Tyler Moore won three Emmys mm -hmm. over the course of the series for Best Actress. Ed Asner, three Emmys, Best Supporting Actor. Valerie Harper, three Emmys, Best Supporting Actress. Amazing. Betty White, two Emmys, Best Supporting Actress. Mm -hmm. Cloris Leachman, two Emmys, best, one for Best Supporting Actress, one for Best Guest Performance by an Actress. Huh. Um, and two for Ted Knight for Best Supporting Actor. And two nominations for um, Georgia Engel, Best Supporting oh, Actress. Oh, the club. Nothing. Nothing? He has a tough role. He it's had tough. a tough He's he a straight was, guy. I no. thought, yeah, I thought he, I thought he was at least, no, he's, he's been nominated. I think he was nominated. I'm going to respectfully allow you to have that opinion. Okay. Even though you're wrong. So, um, so the next episode is the big one. Season six. What episode, Christina? Is Chuckles episode Bites seven. the Dust. Uh, season six, episode seven, Chuckles Bites the Dust. This, uh, this episode won um, the Emmy for Outstanding Writing. It is in so many uh, TV history 1997. Books. TV Guide's 100 Greatest Episodes on TV of All Time. This was number one. Yeah. Um, okay, let's dive right in. Let's dive in. First of all, she has a new apartment. Yes. Which is amazing to me. I completely forgot about the new apartment. Really? Yep. You don't remember the episode when she, when she gets it? And so... That's a great episode. I don't remember what number it is. I remember it like it was yesterday, and I didn't revisit it. And you, what, you watched didn't. it yesterday? <laughs> no, I didn't. But it was like she's... So she gets the new apartment. She's all excited. People come over. She has a great, a, amazing party. This, this, that, and the other thing. Everyone's like, Mary, great apartment. I love it. And she's like, oh, my God, isn't it great? Blah, 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 blah. The whole thing. She puts the M up. The whole thing. Great, great, great. Happy oh, I remember so putting the M up. And then everyone leaves the party. And Lou Graham makes a comment. It's like, congratulations, this is amazing. She closes the door. And she leans her back on the door. She looks all around and she goes, I really don't like it. <laughs> it just ends. <laughs> I do remember, now that you just gave that recap, I do remember. Yeah. All right, so Chuckles Bites the Dust, the iconic episode. By the way, have you ever seen an episode with Chuckles? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um... It begins very weirdly, to be honest, with um, Sue Ann giving uh, Mary Richards a mobile of the four food groups. Yeah, it's like bananas and apples. And, and, and here's the thing. I, like, it, Mary, Mary Richards is, like, at this point has grown quite a bit as a character. Yes. I feel like what Mary's reaction to this is, like, a first season Mary Richards thing. Yeah. Sue Ann Nivens has an ego of steel. It would not have hurt Sue Ann's feelings to throw it away at all. Um, and then to double down, Sue Ann says, Mary, put it in your bedroom. You know, so anything to relieve the tedium. Oh, uh, is that what she said? I thought she said something about entertainment or something. No, like to she, relieve she, oh the tedium. Gosh. She's making a sex, a lack of sex joke to Mary Richards. Wow. At that point, I would have thrown it in the trash, right? Oh, easily. But it becomes like a running gag throughout the episode. And then she's walk, Mary's walking over to the coat rack, and Ted walks by and goes, I like your ring, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, oh God. And just a little note: the pumpkin yeah. cookie bowl, the you yeah, know, yeah, the cookie jar, still yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, in the and apartment. It's, and the Lars episode, the Lars affair. Uh, I think Clarice Leachman opens up to, to get a cookie, and there's nothing in it. Oh, you know, funny! I didn't know that. Um, so and she didn't get anything. That's why she ended up eating fruit. Do you remember? That? Uh, oh, so it was yeah, subtle, yeah. but it was funny. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So I, I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, okay. 
I was a bit disappointed by this episode. Same. Oh my God, I'm so glad you said that. Same. I thought it was a bit of wasted time with the Ted stuff. Yes. Um, and I will tell you, I'm embarrassed because I was like, Matt never watched Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. My husband, Matt, uh, never watched Mary, Mary Tyler Moore show. And I'm like, oh, and he, he watched like a little bit of like here and there as I was watching it. Excuse me. And then he uh, he got up to like do dishes or something like that. I'm like, oh, wait. I'm like, I'm, I'm about to start Chuckles Bites the Dust. I'm like, this is iconic. And I, you know, I'm like, it's won all kinds of awards and Emmys and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you got to watch it. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah. And then I was like, at the end of it, we both looked at each other and we're like, eh. Yeah. I think for the time, for to the make time. jokes about death, Yes. was not something a lot of TV shows did. Yes. And so I think because of the shock humor, it, it was probably very shocking back then. And I yes. think that's what sort of has created that legacy of this episode. Well, and just the fact that it has a legacy, like it's already up here. Yeah. So the expectation of it was way high. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if I had never heard of this episode and I put it on, it probably would have been funnier for me. Yeah, we're, we're true. I think you, um, Ed Asner, it looks like he's ready to laugh the entire episode. It's, yes. And I don't mean that as his character. I mean, like, Ed Asner. I feel like he had a hard time holding it together. Yeah. Uh, so even that big moment where he's like, someone we all know is dead. <laughs> I love that scene. And then he's like, I can't talk about it. And like, <laughs> Mr. Grant! And um, it like, chuckles. Chuckles the clown is dead. And he's trying, and you can see Ed Asner trying not to laugh to get through that speech. I was um, waiting for the funny part, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a big setup. Well, so I think, I know, the funniest thing is Mary's breakdown at the end. That's the funniest thing. The second funny part, I thought, was when the three of them, Sue Ann, Mari, and Lou, are all kind of hunched together. And she's trying to, like, dictate like yeah. Mary's pissed at them because they keep laughing and she's trying to dictate how they should feel how they should you know well no like the, the obituary <gasps> oh and oh, she's oh, saying oh. the characters that he was like yeah. fee fi fo fee fi fo and yeah. Peter Pickles or yeah. whatever banana Peter whatever Peanut, yeah. um and they're all trying to hold it together yeah trying not to laugh I thought that was a pretty funny scene I thought I was like laughing at that one and I was laughing, you know, a little bit. Not as much with the Mary breakout. Break I, oh, I thought that was so damn funny. I mean, it was funny, but again, like, I think the expectations are too high for me. I laughed when Marie said, because uh, uh, Lou Grant says, well, I'm just so glad um, he didn't go after, the elephant didn't go after any, someone else. And Marie's like, that's true. Um, you know how hard it is to step after just one peanut. Right. <laughs> oh, God. So funny. That was funny. The only thing is, I didn't like the part you're talking about when they were all, like, ribbing each other, like, oh, my yeah. God, you know, and, like, See, trying yeah, not yeah, to laugh. I, like I didn't like that so much. Um, I thought it was actually funnier how, how upset Mur uh, Mary was at Murray when she's like, you're not still laughing about that. Because she was so polar opposite. Yes. But, I, but before that, I did laugh out loud when, um, when... Uh, oh my god, Ted Baxter finds out that he's being replaced by Chuckles the Clown. And he says, Chuckles the Clown? Oh, Mary. Well, I hate to say this, but I hope they all laugh at him. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> a little song, a little dance, a little seltzer down your pants. Mm -hmm. um, it I was wish... funny when he was like, he was dressed as a peanut in a rogue elephant trying to shell him. <laughs> yes. Um, I wish I was... This is Ted Baxter. I wish I was nicer to Chuckles. I was pre prejudiced against him just because his skin was different colors than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mary Tyler Moore, the busting out, giggling, sobbing, breakdown, when, and then the priest says, just he laugh. lived to make people yeah. laugh. Tears were an insult to him. And then she's like... And so, so funny. And I love, I did really like the, um, but the thing is, I think the word is funny and I didn't laugh a lot. So yes. that's the thing. I think it's really well written. Really. I mean, I understand why it's so iconic, um, but I loved the conversation about how people want to be, uh, what, what they want to happen to them when they're dead. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Lou Grant says? 
Yeah, name? I don't want to be a fuss. Just put me out with the garbage with my hat on. <laughs> um, and Sue Ann says, well, I want to be cremated and have my ashes thrown on Robert Redford. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then Ted Baxter says, oh, I'm not going to die. I'm like, uh, Ted? <laughs> and uh, but again, sounding very Trumpian. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to die. I'm just going to have them freeze me. And, you know, then they'll unfreeze me later on. And then Mary's like, when they do, Ted, can you take this with you? And it's the mole bit. <laughs> yes, that was very uh, cute. But um, speaking of Lou Grant, that picture of him behind him in his office with yeah. him playing football, that's actually Ed Asner. <gasps> oh, I think I knew and that. And that was from his high school days. Nice. Yeah. And now it brings us, Christina, to the last episode. And it the is last the episode. last show called The Last Show. <laughs> episode uh, season seven, episode yep. twenty four. Um, I thought it was interesting with the scrolling beginning. Credits, Weird, right? Right. Yep. I hadn't seen that with any of the other. Nope. Maybe they just tried to make it longer and didn't have time for it or something. I don't know. What was yeah, because the ending involves the cast taking bows and stuff. Maybe they wanted to So maybe to they wanted that it. little yeah. bit, which I liked. Did you see that in the last ending? Loved it. That was my favorite part. So sweet. Although Carl, really you know what Carl said? He's what? like, oh, wait, so Mary Tullamore is just Mary Richards. <laughs> <laughs> like when she's introducing people, like she's so awkward and like, yeah. oh, you know, and like he's like, it's yeah. her character. Yeah. Um, I have... Like no notes because I was completely enamored by this episode. The, like, and I, I, in my mind, I thought the beginning with uh, Vincent Gardinia when he fires them all. I thought that was like the last five minutes. Oh, interesting. It starts that way, and I completely forgot about that. So, I hate to end this on a negative. I really do. Oh shit! But I. Wasn't thrilled at this episode either. And I was kind of disappointed. Like, the last two episodes I saw, I was like, hmm, I was kind of disappointed by this one. I feel like this one should have been stretched out a little bit longer and had, like, almost like a part one, part two kind of feel to it. I just felt like it was very choppy, very... um, I just didn't feel like there was a lot of heart in it for what the episode is supposed to be. So they start with... You know, of course, you know, everybody gets fired except for Ted, which is Amazing. really, really funny. It's brilliant. Because they think Ted's going to be fine. Yes. They all, they're so all they're like whispering all like, around it's him. It's all right. We'll be fine. We'll be all right. And he walks into the room. They all quiet in, down. He's the, yeah. yeah. He's the only one. He comes. Actually, I love that he comes in with George. Um, oh, I have that note. Yeah. With the kids, his wife, the dog. And the kid the, is. Independence. Well, it was, he was from the Brady Bunch. Yeah, all of her, yeah. the jinx. Yes. Um, anyway, so, but that, the whole beginning part was funny. I love that, like, Mary's like, well, he did say you guys. God, I loved it. So I don't know if they were like, referring to me. Like, all of a sudden, she's playing the woman card, which is hilarious to me. Um, I love that she waited the last episode to do that. Yep. Um, but I will say, like, the Phyllis and Rhoda reunion part of it, I just felt let down. I felt like they were just like throwing them in just to throw them in. I wish they had been more a part of the the whole story and not just like one scene with them kind of bickering. They were trying to like, I feel like they were trying to recapture the beginning seasons with them and it didn't quite gel for me. Um, I liked, I liked Rhoda with Mary but Phyllis seemed very out of place, and the the rivalry between Phyllis and Rhoda seemed out of place. I just didn't like it, and I wished, and that was it. That was the only time you see them. Is just that like a few minute scene, and I, it just would have been nicer to like. I, I feel like it would have been nicer to have them kind of a little bit more throughout the show. So I respectfully disagree. That's fine. Um, because, so it's a layoff and this is really more about her work life. Correct. And, but she is, as she says in this episode, she is a career woman. So this is a part of her life. It's a big part of her life, but, um, it would, wouldn't have made sense for Rhoda and Phyllis to be too involved in the bigger group because Mm -hmm. they don't work there. Well, I think a better option would have just not even had to bring them back. 
I, yeah. I and they like didn't, they clearly, just, I mean, they clearly did like that for the audience. I feel like it was just audience. thrown yeah. in, and I didn't like it. I just didn't feel like it was genuine. I liked it. I think um, it was, it was, I mean, if we're to go along with this, this scheme, it's like, it's nice that, that Lou felt bad enough for Mary to bring her, her friends back. Very I mean, cute. Yeah. Obviously, it was done for the audience. And and those characters did build this show. Yeah. So I think it like it was nice to... I actually really... like. I, I have to be honest. I forgot they did it. Because it's, it's a quick... It's a sort of a short scene, right? It's it, a, yes, very, yeah, very short. And, but I love that they did it. And I, it was like it was nice to see those characters again. I did like how, uh, how like bent out of shape Phyllis Scott when Rhoda was able to make Mary cry. And, um, and I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked seeing yeah. them. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Everyone's heard for Ted and the guys. Yeah. It's actually all the same notes, Christina. Yeah. Um, I wrote that Ed Asner's amazing in this when he gets like so tender hearted. As I said, Lou getting emotional is so sweet. Yeah. It was just really yeah. sweet. Carl, I, I really like that. And Carl, who's probably only seen 12 episodes of the series after, ne- after having never seen it before in his life, also was like... That's really sweet. The hug when they're all like walking over to the tissue box. That is box. one of the funniest That's iconic. Scenes. Like that's they show that scene when they're all just hugging, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're like, "We need a tissue," and they all just like. Doo-doo-doo. So Spooky I'm just over. getting a little. I'm getting a little goosebumpy. Did it make you sad that they were had all have all passed away? Yeah, I mean it did. I mean, yeah, because they're all so, especially when they're all bowing at the end. It's like every all these people are dead. Oh my god, it made me like yeah. so sad. Like, cause yeah. I mean, I mean, they've all had had amazing was, careers, it was, it was, but was still. it Betty White or Cloris Leachman was the last one to come out or to die? To die. Oh shit! I think it was maybe it was Cloris Leachman by a few days. I'll look it. Check up. it out. Well, obviously, but yeah, I mean, Betty that's White just... died on on Christmas. No, I'm sorry, on New Year's Eve. New Year's New Year's Eve, Eve sorry, right. New Year's Eve. At night, and I think that was not last year, but the year before. Did Cloris Leachman die in January of that of the following? I think maybe Cloris Leachman was the last one to pass. I think so, too. But, I mean, they all had amazing careers. And, I mean, Cloris Leachman, you know, she was an Oscar winner. For... January 27th, 2021. Yeah, and Betty White died New Year's Eve 2020, right? I think so, yeah. Uh-oh. No, Betty White was December 31st, 2021. Oh, so Betty White was the last person. Right. I feel like there was somebody behind before her, but I guess, I mean, after her, but I guess not. Oh, I don't know. I could be wrong. Valerie Harper was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's so sad to think that they're all, they've all passed away. But I really loved the last episode. I loved it. And I thought it was, I actually thought it was really smart that they had them laid off right in the beginning. So there was, there was time to say goodbye. And, you know, and there's that, that weird thing about a workplace where it's like, like Lou Grant says, is like, I don't know if I'll ever see you, you people again. Yeah. But, you know, your family to me, you know, essentially, and Mary says, you know, family, you know, people judge me because I'm a career woman and I never had a family. But when I think about family, it's people that are there for you and you yeah. guys have been there for me. So well written. So nicely done. And yeah, I, I loved think, it. I think my criticism is that it was just too quick. It was too choppy. I feel like it could have been a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. And oh. she kissed him on the lips. She kissed Mr. Well, they, Grant so the I lips. didn't watch the episode before that one, but they go on a date. She still calls yes. him Mr. Grant. And I think he does kiss her on the cheek on that, that episode. But yeah, she just kissed him on the lips. And I think like, I don't know, I thought it was okay. Yeah. I don't think it was a romantic one. It, um, wait a minute. So I want, let me tell you the other episodes I watched. Okay. So, needless to say, for me, it was a lot more. I, yes. Oh, for me, it was more also. Yeah. yeah. Here are the other episodes I watched. Season one, episode six, Support Your Local Mother. Oh, yeah. Nancy I Walker. wanted to watch that one, yeah. Season one, episode eight, The Snow Must Go On. Chuckles okay. the Clowns in that one. Uh, season one, episode 18, Second Story Story, Mary's Apartment Gets Robbed Twice. Oh, jeez. Season three, episode six, Road of the Beautiful, when Valerie Harper lost 20 pounds. Oh, that's Oh, it's right, super yeah. interesting. It's really interesting because through my middle age lens, it's like, ouch. Like, it's um, really interesting because Rhoda, and it, it's very timely because Rhoda loses weight, but she still feels unattractive. Yeah. And um, it, they kind of deal with that a bit. Uh, season three, episode seven, just around the corner where Mary's parents move in down the street from her. 
which is very funny. Uh, season three, episode 14, Rhoda, Morgan Stern, Minneapolis to New York. The whole episode is about Rhoda getting a job in New York and leaving. Oh, okay. And at the very end, she doesn't. And I was like, oh, shit, I would watch this because I thought she was actually oh, leaving really the funny. show. What, what season was that? Season three, episode 14. Oh, okay. Season four, episode 10, The Dinner Party. I watched that. That was great. Season six, episode one, Edie Gets Married. So that's the one where um, his ex-wife shows up and she invites Mary and Lou to the wedding. But this yeah. is what's weird about that episode. His, um, Lou Grant's daughter shows up and she oh. really begs him to come to the wedding. And Christina, it's kind of weird. It's a little creepy. I want you to watch it. Because okay. the daughter's like... I just don't know. Like, I think the casting was probably a bit problematic. She's a little va va voom oh. and a little too, like, she kisses, she's kissing him on his baldness to try and, like, but daddy, I really want, yeah, it's a I little, little like weird. And then he does kiss her on the lips as they're saying goodbye. That kiss bothered me way more than the Mary kiss. I just don't like kisses on the lips, I guess. It's a lot. Uh, I did a little, little trivia. So Rhoda, the TV spinoff, you probably, maybe you did this too. Rhoda's, the spinoff was from 74 to 78. Five seasons, 110 episodes. Loved Rhoda. I I watched that religiously. Lou, I'm sorry, Phyllis spinoff, 75 to 77. Mm -hmm. Only two seasons. Now. That surprised well, me. Well, here's why. And it's similar with Rhoda. So two seasons, 48 episodes. The first season of Phyllis was got more viewers than Rhoda and Mary Tyler Moore, the more, Mary Tyler Moore wow. show. Wow. It was number six. It was the highest rated TV show on television. Now, um, what happened on the, to the Phyllis cast is that the characters that were becoming really popular were elder, the elderly characters, and so they gave them more to do. They gave the her workplace characters less to do. And after the murder of Ira Colby, things were yeah. a little weird with the cast. They recast some roles. They weren't working out. The elderly actors died. Oh, no. And so they're like, oh, God. And then they just decided, like, they couldn't quite get it. Get the. They end up giving Phyllis a new job. It wasn't working out. The audience was kind of, like, losing interest. Yeah. And they, can't, just, they just wrapped it up. However, on Rhoda, this is super interesting. The first... Two to three, se two seasons were a hit. Valerie Harper, I think, won an Emmy. It was all this kind of stuff. It was her and Joe, they were married. Yep. The producers and um, the creators felt that Rhoda was losing her edge. They're like, she's kind of just becoming like a bit of an too ordinary. Like, we're losing Rhoda in this. Even though the show was a huge hit. Yeah. They had the characters get divorced. I remember that. The ratings nosedived wow instantly well joe was a lovable character like yeah. joe was a good guy and i remember feeling like what like what happened yeah like it made me sad yeah it really made me sad when they divorced and they focused more on the sisters yeah um, brenda and the, right and the moms and julie kavner was one of the sisters yes right? julie kavner from and she's the voice of marge marge simpson and then it just kept the ratings kept crashing further and further yeah. down um even though it did and really Nancy well the walker Emmys and the, the legend was her mom that's right yeah and then lou grant uh, 77 to 82, five seasons, 114 episodes. It won uh, multiple Emmys for Best Drama, Emmys for uh, Ed Asner. And he is in, I don't know if this has been done before, but he's he is the only performer to win an Emmy for the same role in a comedy and a drama. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I think I knew that. And that is that. I have a match game. I have a match game as well. You go first. All right. I almost did an FMK, but I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. Not with, not with these guys. So, Sue Ann Nibbins oh boy. was known as the happy homemaker. Yeah. But, after all of her dalliances, she probably should have been known as the blank. Oh, there's two really good answers. Oh, wait. Say the, wait, say where the blank is again? What did you say? The... After all of her dalliances, she should have been known as the blank homemaker. Oh, that's really two great answers. I was going to do the happy... Wow. Do you know what I was going to write? I thought it was going to be the, ha the happy blank, not the blank. Happy homemaker? 
Happy Home Wrecker or the Happy Ho? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Alright, the blank. All right. Ding. Alright. Sue Ann Nevins was known as the Happy Homemaker, but after all of her dalliances, she probably should have been known as the blank homemaker. The hoey homemaker. Oh, the horny homemaker. Oh, that was so good. I wrote, I, I wrote, I actually wrote slutty and I scribbled it out. Ah, well, this was the H. I thought, right. you, I thought you had it there for a second. The here we hoey? go. Is that a word? Hoey, like hoish. Oh. All right, here we go. Georgette is very sweet, but as we know, not very bright. True. She took the Pepsi challenge. She chose blank. Oh boy. <laughs> By the way, the Pepsi Challenge, uh, 1975. The Pepsi wow, Challenge started really? in 1975. Oh my god. For the unfamiliar. Did everybody Pepsi, know? Yeah, yeah the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and talk over the music right now. But the Pepsi Challenge, for those unfamiliar, is uh, when you people have saying that Coke and Pepsi taste you know, alike. But Pepsi was like, no, we taste better than Coke, and we're going to make people pick which one they like the best. And there's a sports TV campaign of people picking Pepsi over Coke as which one tastes better. Did you ever take the Pepsi challenge? I love Coke. I am a Coke person. I always liked Coke better, too. I don't drink Coke. I don't drink I don't drink soda, soda but, yeah. But I, I take Coke. Every once in a while, I'll do a Coke Zero. Every once in a while. Um, all right, ready? Right, yes. Georgette is very... Oh, did you ding? Ding. Ding. Georgette is very sweet. Not very bright. She took the Pepsi challenge. She chose blank. She chose root beer. Damn it! Oh no. She chose Jif. Uh, <laughs> choosing my mother's dude choose, choose, choose Jif. Jif. <laughs> <laughs> but root beer is pretty good too. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, that's so that's funny. the Mary Tyler Moore show. Yeah. Oh, we said we both said more. Uh, we like we it did. more than before. More. More. Mary, Mary Tyler, Tyler Moore. Moore. Uh, so it's and as of this point, it's on Hulu yeah. and it's on Amazon Prime. Yes. Enjoy. And that's it for us and for this episode of Old Roommates. Thank you for listening. Please remember to follow us on Instagram or YouTube where we have our episodes as well as a little extra. And if you have any questions about our show, any suggestions for movies we could revisit, reach out to us at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening. This is Brian. And this is Christina. Until next time.